Hello friends. Before discussing the lesson, I want to show you something. Can you identify what is this? Yes, it is one of the earliest wheels invented. This ancient stone wheel was found during excavation. Evidence indicates the wheel was created to serve as potter's wheels around 3500 BC in Mesopotamia, 300 years before they were used for chariots. This miraculous invention has made the whole world a global village and has brought the whole world on wheels. Isn't it? That ancient inventor must have never thought that he was creating a miracle. The world would not have advanced so much without a wheel. Today, before discussing the lesson with you, I would like to salute that unknown scientist who invented or made the wheel. Now can you guess what lesson I am going to deal with today? Yes, transportation from your geography text. How can transportation happen without a wheel? Isn't it? Now, at the end of this lesson, we will be able to understand the meaning and importance of transport in Karnataka. Know the different means of transportation. List the different types of roads and railways. Identify the roads and railways that link various cities, capitals and states. Identify the importance and role of air transport and water transport. Mark the important roadways, rail routes, airports and water ports on the map of Karnataka. And lastly, understand the role played by transportation in the development of the state. Importance of transport. Let's know the meaning. Transport refers to the system of carrying persons and goods from one place to another. Now, what is the importance? What is the role of transport? It is the lifeline in the progress of agriculture, industry and commerce. An efficient transport system is essential in order to achieve economic development through proper use of resources. Karnataka is primarily an agricultural country. Different means of transport facilities are necessary to transport food, grains and other agricultural produce to the market, minerals from mines, manufactured goods from the factories, people from one place to another and for various other purposes. And Karnataka has well-developed road, rail, water, and air transport facilities. You know that our earth has three layers. So are the types of transportation, land, air, and water. And land has got two types of transport systems, that is roadways and railways. Let us take them one by one. Now, to begin with road transport, as you can see the different vehicles, the road transport has bus, car, lorry, truck, cycle, van, tractor, etc. Large number of people live in rural areas in Karnataka. So, road transport plays a very important role in linking the villages and towns. Roads can be constructed easily at low cost. People and goods can be transported to every nook and corner of the state. Development of roads determine the progress of the state's agriculture, industry, mining and commerce. Road transport has been in use from ancient times in Karnataka by kings. After independence, when the Vishala Mysore state was formed in 1961. Totally 43,182 kilometers of roads were laid. At present, 
the total length of the road is 2,31,962 kilometers of which 35.7 are metalled or asphalted roads and 64.3 are unmetalled roads. It shows clearly that we need to improve our roads. But there has been little improvement also. Now, the roads can be broadly classified into national highways, state highways, district roads and village roads. Now, what are these roads? National highways. Now, national highways are, are the roads which link important cities, capitals, states and ports. They are, that is why they are called as national highways. The construction and the maintenance of national highways is under central government. The, the national highways may be two lane or four lane and six lane. You can see when you go to the highways, you can see the white lines drawn there. Those lanes indicate the speed of the vehicle and the type of the vehicle which has to pass on the lanes. There are about 14 national highways in Karnataka and their total length is 4,491 kilometers. National Highway Authority of India um, is uh, launched to take care of these things. Now coming to state highways. State highways connect the state capital that is Bangalore to different districts, headquarters, towns and highways. The maintenance and construction of state highways is in the hands of state government and there are about 20,905 kilometers of state highways. Belagavi has the longest state highway whereas Bangalore has the least. What are district roads? District roads link headquarters with taluk headquarters, major towns, villages, railways and major highways. The construction and maintenance of maintenance of these roads is under Zilla Parishad. Karnataka has about 47,836 kilometers of district roads. Now, what are village roads? Village roads link taluk headquarters with village and district highways. The construction and maintenance of these roads is under taluk panchayat and village panchayat. Karnataka has about 1,47,212 kilometers. See children, you have to make points like this uh, to learn the lesson. Later you can write them in the form of sentences. That, ha that is why I have made the chart like this. Now, the map shows, this is the map which is there in your textbook. It shows, the dark line shows the national highway connecting the important cities and districts of the state. These are the major. You have to learn this map. Railways. You can see different types of trains here. Railways is the second most important mode of transport. What you cannot transport through roads, what you cannot transport through airways, that can be transported through trains. It is economical for long distance travel and transportation of goods, especially heavy goods. It is economical also and it is very convenient, luxurious also, isn't it? So, train journey is always better, uh, very comfortable. First railway line was opened for traffic in 1864, laid down between Bangalore and Madras. Karnataka had southern railway zone. Now, Southwestern Railway Zone is added with Hubali as the administrative center. This, this is the rail route map I have put from your textbook. Broad gauge. Broad gauge. What is broad gauge? Map shows the broad gauge which means railways, railway tracks which are wider than 1 meter. Generally 1 meter uh, tracks, uh, wide tracks will be there. Broad gauge means a wider tracks than one meter that can carry um, larger um, uh, what is that compartments of trains, bogies. It can carry the bogies will be larger, bigger to carry the heavy 
objects, materials. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, in Karnataka state, there is no uniform distribution of railway tracks in all the districts. Bengaluru, Bellari, Belagavi, Hasan, Uttar Kannada, Chitradurga, Udupi, Ramnagar and Dakshin Kannada districts have average uh, of 150-200 km long railway tracks. Kodagu district has no railway. Now, coming uh, to overcome the problem of congestion, Namma Metro Rail Transport Plan is being implemented. You can see, I think you must be, Bangalore children must be uh, watching these metros, beautiful metros. So, it is in order to help the, uh, reduce the congestion in the uh, traffic in Bangalore. Now, the this is the most, Konkon Railways is the most railway route, most important railway route of West Coast. It links Mangaluru and Mumbai and has reduced the time of traveling from 41 kilometers to just 18 hours. Its length is 273 kilometer with 13 main and 310 bridges. It See, it passes through, uh, it, uh, uh, it crosses the river bridges, bridge of 202.2 kilometers, the longest bridge, and Kali River Bridge, which is 1.2 kilometers. These are the important bridges since this railway passes through many tunnels across bridges and lot of beautiful sceneries. So, this is one of the most beautiful journey to watch. In the train, you can see these see the waterfalls during monsoon. Traveling in the train during monsoon is really a very beautiful journey. See, it is coming out from the tunnel. Beautiful journey. One must enjoy this journey at least once. Yes, now the air transportation. Air transport is the fastest mode of transport as you all know it. What uh, hours together we take in traveling by bus or train, we can finish in minutes in the air. It helps to carry people, mail, lightweight goods to distant places in the shortest time. Air transport is of great help during natural calamities, wars and other emergencies. You must have seen that during floods and other situations, uh, people come through aeroplanes or helicopters and extend the help. They drop the food uh, packets and they lift the people from those places, isn't it? So, air transport is of great help during natural calamities, wars and other emergencies. These are the four means of air transport. However, it is the costliest mode of transport. Yeah. Now, this is the Indian Airways. Deccan Airways was launched in the year 1946 from Bengaluru and Hyderabad. Then came the Indian Airways, which was nationalized in 1953 and many cities were linked with Bangalore. In the year 1996, State Airport of Bangalore was declared as International Airport. Belagavi, Hubali, Mysuru and Mangaluru have domestic airports. Domestic means flying from one state to another state is domestic. New airports are being established in Hassan and Kalburgi. The Kempe Gowda International Airport is the country's first green airport. This airport is well equipped to provide various facilities and the most modern airport you can see now. See the beautifully constructed airport with lot of greeneries which runs for kilometers and this is how it looks inside the airport, Aero aeroplanes uh, being parked beautifully. Yes, the next is water transport. Karnataka has inland 
as well as sea waterways. At present, inland waterways include motor boats, small rowing boats, dinghies, and rafts. They are used in Udupi, Uttar Kannada, and Dakshin Kannada districts. These districts have Kali, Sharavati, and Netravati rivers running in between. Therefore, they have to cross in, in order to go from one area to another area. They have to use boats to cross the region. So, boats are used in some places to cross Krishna River. Like that, boats are used. With the development of road and railway transport, the use of water transport has come down. See how all these are boats. Yes, seaports. What are seaports? You know that the ports that are constructed to uh, sail the ships, isn't it? The coastal places where ships are sheltered are called ports. Ships are used for fishing, trade, passenger travel and transport of goods. In Karnataka, there are about 23 small and large ports. The Port Development Authority came into being in 1957. The new Mangaluru port is the ninth major port of the country and it is called the Gateway of Karnataka. Through this port, iron ore, coffee, spices, cashew, sandalwood, tiles, chromite, granite, stones and canned fruit fish etc are exported and petroleum is imported. Ten smaller ports have been developed. These are Old Mangaluru Port, Malpe, Hangarakatte, Kundapura, um, Padubidri, Bhatkal, Hunnavara, Tadri, Belakeri and Karwar. And Karwar is the most beautiful port and it is an all weather port. So the port doesn't get disturbed during rainy season or any other season. This is the Mangalore port and Karwar here. Karwar is one port here and Mangalore is the gateway of Karnataka and these are small ports. Yes, children, with this I have completed the lesson and these are important questions for you to answer. Please answer all these questions. Write them down in your notebook and this lesson is there for map work. Therefore, you have to learn to draw a neat outline map of Karnataka and I have given you some places. You can mark some more places which are shown in the textbook. I have given Bangalore, Hubli, Belagavi, Raichur, Gateway of Karnataka. See, the names given to the port or the airports will be given by us and you have to identify which one. Now, suppose when I say gateway of Karnataka, you should know that it is Mangaluru port and Karwar port. So, please answer these questions. Write them down in your notes. Read your lesson. I hope you have understood the lesson. Travel opens your heart, broadens your mind and fills your life with stories to travel, stories to tell. So, keep traveling. Thank you for watching. I hope you have understood the lesson. Thank you again.